So it was in the second quarter of last night's Cleveland Boston game that Jason Tatum elbowed LeBron in the jaw. And while afterward everyone involved said it was just an accident, the way the Celtics collectively elbowed the Cavaliers in the jaw oh. in the second half certainly wasn't. There is no other way to look at this. The Celtics delivered a huge blow in game two and now have command and control of this series. And they did it by being the exact team they told us they were all season. One of my favorite things the great Maya Angelou ever said was, quote, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. Maya well, yep. through the regular season and the playoffs, guess who's been the best team in the entire NBA at coming back from double digit deficits? Yep, Boston. So when LeBron went crazy in the first quarter, dropping 21, and the Cavs subsequently led by as many as 11, guess what the Celtics did? Exactly what they've done for months, which is just keep coming. How? Well, when I asked Brad Stevens about the Celtics' strategy on the force of nature that is still LeBron James, he said, quote, make it as hard as possible for as long as possible. And that's exactly what they did. Yeah, LeBron had a 42-point triple-double, but he had to fight like hell for it. Tracking data said he had one open look the entire game. One. And that was in the first 90 seconds of the first quarter. And LeBron was hardly the only one that the Celtics just dogged. Want to know how many open shots Cleveland had the whole game? 11. Mm. And eight of those wow. came in the first half. Mm. In the second half, as the game grew more critical, the Celtics only got better, suffocating Cleveland so thoroughly, only three of the 39 shots they took in the second half were open. Did you see Marcus Smart doing every little thing he could out on that court, Everything. fighting for every loose ball? Later, Jalen Brown would say, Marcus Smart was born with his hands <laughs> dirty, which is an amazing quote and absolutely true. That's a downside. Meanwhile, the Cavs were going in the opposite direction. Want to know how many of Boston's second half looks were uncontested? How many? Well, 20 of the Celtics' 48 of shots were course. open left. That makes a lot of sense now. <laughs> that is insane. Again, when someone shows you who they are, <gasps> believe them. Cleveland was downright negligent on defense for much of this season, and that is what we saw last night. And it cost them the game, and very well may have cost them the series. You know, it's funny. I woke up in Boston this morning, and on the radio, people were up in arms, very feathers ruffled about something co Cavs coach Ty Lue said on the post-game podium, that the Celtics were, quote, gooning the game up. But if you look back at the whole quote, Ty is actually using that phrase as a compliment. Here it is in full. He said Boston is, quote, playing tougher than we are, being physical, gooning the game up, and we've got to do the same thing. We've got to be tougher gotta mentally and physically. Yeah, that's the first, that's the and first he's right. <laughs> the Celtics whacked the Cavaliers in the jaw last night, and if the Cavs don't get tougher themselves in all facets, they're going to be down for the count and quickly. So, Tracy, I mean, look. You were not at all of those the video coming through. I mean, LeBron fell back after the game on the whole, like, well, they did what they were supposed to do at home. Now we got to do what we're supposed to do at home. But tell me, come on, how much trouble are the Cavs actually in right now? Well, that's what we used to say. Um, and, and, you know, looking back on the history of the NBA that you're supposed to take care of home court advantage. Mm -hmm. And the Celtics did that. So now it's Cavaliers' turn. But the way these two games have went, I expected the Cavs to at least show some resistance in this game. I mean, LeBron was just spectacular in those first, you know, 15 or first 10 minutes of the uh -huh. game where he was just unguardable. But at some point, you knew the resistance from the, the Celtics was going to, you know, stop all that. These other guys, I, I mean, it's, it pains me to watch JR, J Jeff Green, uh, Rodney Hood. Like, these guys are showing no help, no signs of help for LeBron James, and he's going to need it. He could have had 50-point triple-double last <laughs> night and still lost his game. Like, for JR, you are a starting shooting guard. You can't have more technical, technical fouls, fouls than points. Yeah. yeah. It was I, I, not a good night for the and, and, and I love Ty Lue. I love Ty Lue. When LeBron went out of that game, when he took that hit, mm -hmm. Corbett was on the bench. He was your second leading scorer. Like, he had to, you had to put him in that game. He should be playing more yeah. minutes. And then also staggering Kevin Love and, and LeBron. There's a lot of times when both of them are off the floor. I said, well, where's your all-star? Who's going to be your focal point? Now, th th they might be in a lot of trouble for, for a couple reasons. Some of them can be fixed. Some of them can't. <laughs> Offensively, I thought LeBron, as you pointed out very clearly, he had to work for everything. And there was a lot of dribbling, a lot of dribbling against two, three defenders. And I thought that really gassed him for the second half of the game. A lot of people thought it was because he got hit in the jaw. He says that didn't, that didn't 
had anything to do with it. I believe him. I believe he was actually just tired from having to work so hard. They've got to do more stuff like this, where he's acting as a passer. Yeah. You got guys screening and cutting. That was the first or maybe the second play of the game. Mm -hmm. But J.R. Smith got a wide open layup out of here. Here you got uh, Kevin Love. Again, backdoor cut because the that Celtics. Worked, that worked for them a bunch. I don't know yeah. why they, they didn't go back they, to they that. stopped running that. I know. They just went to give it to LeBron and let him work, work, work. And does it work? Yes. But you've got to understand there's a toll. He can't keep doing this forever. Well, and, and that's the thing. If any criticism goes to LeBron, mm -hmm. Like, you're working too hard to score. You, ha you are 6'8", 260. You have to get on the post mm -hmm. and work because if you continue to try to take these guys off the dribble on the perimeter, you're working too hard. You're going to wear yourself out. I think you do a better job of not only involving yourself and making the game easier and reserving your energy on the post, but you also can see the defense and make things happen to pass the ball. You, you How know, does he do that, though, with the way, I'm curious, with the way they're defending him? Because they're obviously, they're just clogging up the paint. They've got two or three you, guys rolling to him at switch. any time. Did you see him last night when he was on the post? It was easy. Yeah. First it play of the second half. Easy. First play of the second half. And you know what's funny? The guy who said this was before these games even got started. It was Kobe Bryant in that detail clip. Remember, right. he was talking about you need to get on the post and you can't start at the Makes mid sense. post. You got to get down there on that block right. and start from there. And now you're not dribbling to get to where you need to right. go. You're starting there. You got a live dribble and you can now you can pass. You can dribble. You can do whatever. And the, and the thing about it, Rachel, nobody can move him off that mm -mm. spot. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. He's so sh big, so strong. Nobody can move him out that spot. Whereas if he was light, you know, you push him out there, yep. there to the three-point line. Right. But he solidifies his spot once he gets there.